show. And I'll make a confession. I, I hadn't seen your TEDx talk until mm. about two weeks ago, once I knew mm. you were coming on. And, I, I, you know, my life is busy. I have a 10-month-old daughter. Things are crazy. And I was blown away that, A, your TEDx talk had 27.5 million views on it. Mm. Your YouTube has, I think, 7 million views or mm. something like that. When you did that talk, did you expect it to have the response in any shape or form that it has? Because clearly, people are hungry for what you have to say. You know, it's um, it's interesting. When, when I gave that TED Talk, no, there were only five TED Talks on the internet. So I gave it, really, when I showed up and gave that talk, I gave it to 1,200 people in the room and 300 people who were streamed in from Aspen. So I was giving my talk to 1,500 people. And little did I know that two weeks later, that thing would be put on the internet and Ted and I got famous together instantaneously. And it was, it was an amazing experience. And energetically, I call it a tsunami of energy because it was, it exploded. It went to Oprah. Oprah then invited me on her website, her uh, web uh, show, which ended up being the first soul interview for the soul series. Oh, wow. And then uh, I was chosen as one of time magazines, 100 most influential people in the world, all inside of six weeks. And so you can imagine, bam, my life just, it, I, I describe that energetic as powerful as the morning of the stroke when I lost my left hemisphere and almost lost my life. And, and so, it, so it was wild. I mean, it was absolutely wild. And, and no, I had no idea uh, that it would go the way that, that it went. Unbelievable. And I, and I, and I, I, I sincerely mean this they um i do a lot of public speaking you know i i I'm, I'm, i talk in front of people a lot but when i watched your tedx i was absolutely moved and blown away from start to finish and to captivate someone like that for 18 minutes have them laugh have them cry have them curious like you took me through all the emotional spectrums and to come out the other end i was just like oh and the way the way it ended, like I, I, <laughs> I think I can that's move why now. it went viral. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it ended up being a, a really powerful presentation, and and I, you know, I led with my heart. Uh, hmm. I was willing to be vulnerable and open, and I felt like these were fifteen hundred really significant people in the planet who all kind of had their own empires. And if I could influence those empire leaders, then that would trickle down in their world and in their business and in their personal life, and it would have a really meaningful spread. Um, and and then you know on top of that, it ended up being what it was as as uh, as a TED talk. And and TED, we really I didn't know what TED was when they came to me and said, "Would you give a talk?" Because it wasn't all over the internet yet until that, until that Ted talk went crazy. So, um, so yeah, Ted and I have a very loving and supportive relationship of, of what we've been through together. I don't doubt it. And you mentioned something to me then that just struck a chord, which I want to pick up on about you led with your heart and you were vulnerable and we live in a day and age where we are not encouraged to lead with, you know, everything is about right. the, the ego, the left side, the, the climb the ladder. How much of your life now you live is led from the heart as opposed to maybe it might have been before you had the stroke? Much more. Um, before, when I was young, I was very uh, heart based. And I was musical and I was athletic and I was artistic and playful and happy and joyful and loving and all that um, until I went to college. And then I finally fell in love with the subject of anatomy. It was so beautiful. 
And so I began to study anatomy and then neuroanatomy and biochemistry and physiology and, you know, all of that. And it, it's, you know, we are this incredible masterpiece, just a masterpiece. And it was so beautiful to me. And so I just ended up, the, the ego turned on, the academic left brain turned on. I started learning. I started excelling. I started climbing the ladder. One thing led to another. I ended up doing my postdoc at Harvard where I was uh, really training as a neuroanatomist and teaching and performing research and writing papers and doing the whole thing. And then bam, my left brain experiences this hemorrhage and it shuts down. And I was very fortunate that I already had a really strong and healthy right brain. And I, I, so I never, I didn't go unconscious. I was conscious. I was aware of what was going on through the eyes of a scientist. It was really clear on the morning of the stroke. I just watched the circuits break down, break down, break down, which is outlined in that TED talk. And then, you know, I ended up that afternoon, I could not walk, talk, read, write, recall any of my life. So the left hemisphere that deals with the external world and understands my past and understands the future, they were gone. And it left me in this blissful euphoria of the present moment. And it was magnificent. Yet at the same time, I was 100% completely non-functional. You have to have a left brain in order to be able to relate to the external world in order to be able to have a life there, to know what your name is, to know anything about where you live or any data or organize or control anything out there. You have to have that left brain. But the gift that it gave me through the eyes of a scientist was when there is no left brain, what is the right brain? And then the right brain had to come in and figure out with the big picture, how do I get that left brain circuitry to function again? So that was an eight year journey, but it was an amazingly insightful journey for me. And then it ended up being insightful for the world. Wow. And it, 